Welcome to All About Albemarle, the segment where we talk about the things that matter to the people who live, work, and play in the city of Albemarle. I'm David Fath, the Communications Director for the city, and joining me today is Brittany McLennan with our Planning and Development Department. And Brittany, one of the many things you do in the Planning and Development Department is manage the city's historic marker program. And I wanted to learn a little bit about that Tell folks about the Historic Marker Program. Yeah, thank you, David. So the city of Albemarle has a rich history, and we wanted to do something to bring attention to those notable locations and their histories. The Historic Marker Program started a little over a year ago with the launching of 10 locations located in downtown. And one of the things that is important about the program to acknowledge is that we have a partnership with the Historical Society to, Society to make sure that we've got accurate information Uh, Tell us a little bit about their role. Yeah, the Historical Society has been a great partner for this program. They're actually the reason that made it possible because they originally were producing um, a printed brochure for a walking tour downtown. And in exploring marker locations, um, having worked with websites before, I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could give this a digital component, if people could walk around and see a photo and, you know, take it off the paper and bring it into real life. Yeah, and speaking of the technology aspect, So we've got markers, as you mentioned, at 10 locations, and we'll go through those in a little bit. I want to talk a little bit about what's on the marker. So we've got a short description, um, historical narrative, and I believe those are written by Lewis Bramlett, the local historian, and also a black and white photo of what the structure would have looked like in its period. And then also a QR code. And uh, tell us a little bit about what happens when someone scans that QR code. That's the thing that you use with your smartphone. Yeah. So the QR code takes you to a story map, which is a um, GIS-based map. Once you scan it, you can see all 10 locations that are marked, but you also can click on each location and see additional photos and additional content about each location that wouldn't fit on the marker. So it's an additional added plus for when you're doing the walking tour if you have your phone to scan that QR code and get that information. Yeah, very simple to use. We're all familiar with pull out your smartphone, you go to restaurants, you see that little QR code to scan for the menu. Mm -hmm. We've got that on those markers and you get the information you just described. Pretty cool. Uh, Something I want to talk about is the locations of those markers. Right now there are 10 in place. Can you kind of give a little list of some of the highlights that people should look for? Yeah, we have markers located at the Alameda Theater at 147 North 2nd Street, the Stanley County Courthouse at 201 South 2nd Street, Starnes Parker Building and Opera House at 127 West Main Street, the Isaiah and Ellen Snuggs House, and the Freeman Marks House at 112 North 3rd Street, Um, just to name a few. And are there any kind of little historic factoids to throw at people on uh, any of those locations you'd want, like to share? So the my, my favorite one is that the Opera House um, was used to store empty coffins during the great influenza epidemic um, when when the hospital needed extra space. Um, and interestingly, interestingly enough, the building of the Alameda Theater sort of marked the closing of the Stearns Opera House as people started to seek going to the movies more and less to the opera. Very interesting. So connected history there. Yes, and of course, a lot more to, to learn about that when you pass by the marker, mm-hmm. scan your uh, QR code on yeah. that location. All right, so City Council has also approved some new locations just this week. Can you kind of give us a little sneak peek about what people may be looking for in the future. Yeah, so we are, um, we just got approved new locations and we're trying to expand the walking tour. Um, So we'll be marking our first building in the Five Points District, which will be the Morgan Motors Company building at 304 and 310 East Main Street. We're also going to be marking the former U.S. Post Office, also used to be the police station, at 203 North 2nd Street, um, as well as the big store, as it's historically known, which is now first on Main Apartments, located at 103 North 1st Street. Um, We will also be marking um, a few other buildings in downtown that have historic history and are contributing structures. And I also know that there's 
a little bit of a move to expand the historic marker program, specifically in the Kingville areas. It's known. Can you kind of give us a little sneak peek on those markers? Yeah. So this expansion marks another partnership um, working with a local organization called the Stanley County Avengers. Um, and we have been working with Dion Brooks, who heads up that organization. But he has started... Um, he has started bringing recognition to the historically black neighborhood of Albemarle known as Kingville, and he wanted to install markers. He wanted originally to do cast markers. Um, and after talking, I said, we have this program that already exists, and I would love to expand in your neighborhood. How can we collaborate? So I'm working with him. We were able to identify six more locations that we'll be placing markers at with this expansion approved by city council. And any uh, hints as to where those will be? <laughs> so we will be marking um, the home of Henry Wall. Uh, we'll be marking the Kingville High School and Kingville Park, as well as Elk Sports Club and Lodge. And in talking with Mr. Brooks and my director, we felt that it was important to mark some of these locations because they may be falling into disrepair and have to be demolished soon. So it's good to note history mm. that has the potential of being lost. Yeah. That way, even if it's not there, the history is still significant and anybody can enjoy it. Exactly. And, and we have some of those in the downtown area, some of the structures that are no longer there. When you go along the walking path, you get that sense of history of what used to be there. Uh, in its heyday. Yeah, we sure do. One of the locations marked in downtown is the former Marilise Hotel, um, which is lo used to be located at the parking lot right at the corner of First and Main. Um, and that hotel was run by Alice Mayberry and then upon her death run by her two daughters. And it was actually the name became is a combination of her two daughters names. Huh. And it's one of my favorite locations. Yeah, very fascinating and so many little historical nuggets to sort of pull out. Uh, so the next time you're downtown and you want to get a little exercise in and learn while you're at it, uh, be sure to look for those historic markers. They're brown. They've got a black and white photo on them and uh, that QR code in description as well. Brittany, I really appreciate you taking us sort of behind the scenes, giving us a sneak peek of what's to come and uh, telling us a little bit of, about what's already in place. So thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, that's all the time we have this week for All About Albemarle. Don't forget to follow the City of Albemarle on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn for more information about what's happening in our community. For Brittany McClendon, I'm David Fath. Thanks for listening.